Welcome everybody, this will be my second weekly mailbag every Tuesday at 7.30 Central Time. I do a weekly episode, and this one uh, is about Spectre. At least the first question is about Spectre. So the first question is, I was hoping you could talk about Spectre a bit, seeing as she was recently buffed slash fixed quite significantly, and he's talking about like the haunt fix and some of the illusions, and she recently got buffed with the reality. Is she viable? and in what sort of lineup and with what item builds. If you had a draft specter as a carry, who would your other four picks be your bans? And this was asked actually before Dignitas ran them in their lineup. And this was a game versus no time hunter on Saturday. Um, and they actually picked Spectre and Warlock and we haven't seen either of those heroes in a very, very long time. I saw like N9 run Spectre once, but it just completely failed. He just got owned in the laning phase and just ended the game in 25 minutes. The other team did. And that's that wasn't a good showing. I think this one is a pretty good showing of what Spectre is capable of and what her weaknesses are. She is a her, I believe. Uh, her name in Dota 1 is Mercur Mercurial, and I'm fairly certain this is her, so I will probably re be referring to her as a she. So, firstly, the picks, they you have to... Have, pretty much put her in the safe lane. She cannot be in mid solo, she cannot be in the off lane, and she's just, she's a carry, and most carries go in the safe lane, uh, farm lane. And I guess maybe you could do like aggressive tri triple lane, but you really do need a lot of heroes to babysit Spectre. So in this lineup, we have Bat, uh, solo off lane, Rubik Bane to support the Spectre, and the Warlock solo middle. And Rubik and Bane are pretty good in a triple lane, but with Spectre, it's actually their triple lane is actually very weak compared to the Undying, Luna, and Crystal Maiden, and I'll go more into that later. So we see Luna versus Spectre. These are these are the hard carries in this game, and this is played by Aki, and then this is played by AUI2000, uh, both the carry players. So let's see, like why why did they pick Spectre? What's the benefit of using Spectre and um, like, what what are the weaknesses, and how can each team capitalize on it? How can No Titan capitalize on Spectre's weaknesses, and how can Dignitas capitalize on Spectre's strengths? So, let's see. The laning phase goes pretty much as expected. It is just triple lane versus triple lane on bottom, and they uh, No Titan immediately tries to block the creep creep pulse on because they know they have a stronger triple lane and level one decay is really really strong telekinesis does zero damage specters dagger does 50 damage and decay just saps four strength along with dealing 20 damage four strength is four times 19 76 hp along with 20 that's 100 damage aoe nuke 10 second cooldown and they have a way stronger level one and loda has lunar blessing at level one three times four, 14 is 42 damage so one right click from each of them does 42 damage and that's like almost as much as Aoi's nuke right now. And they have Brain Set, but Brain Set only does, uh, what, 90 damage? And it takes a lot of mana, and it's not very spammable. So immediately from the get-go, they're behind because of Spectre's like, laning capabilities. And I'll just put on player's perspective a little bit while I talk. So what are the cons of Spectre versus Luna? I talk about Spectre versus Luna because this is a particular matchup, but they're both. But Luna is a very popular carry, so I think it's reasonable to compare it to her. So, one of the cons is that he, she has no range, and that's very important because Luna can just harass her, usually, and um, just having range is a really big deal, especially in the triple lane. If you're at a, if you're a melee hero versus range, is an inherent disadvantage, and also Spectre is really weak at level one. He only has a 50 damage, 16 cooldown thing that does 50 damage, which is really, really low. And the move speed, movement speed bonus is almost negligible. It's 5%. That's almost nothing. And Luna already has more base move speed, 330 versus 295. And again, I was talking about Lunar Blessing. Lunar Blessing at level 1 is really strong compared to Dagger. And it's important to note that because in triple lane, you're rarely under-leveled for a long time. It's 2 minutes in, and these two supports are level 1. So the early game, the levels 1 and 2, is actually worth noting. And he has a relatively low damage nuke. Compare Spectral Dagger to Lucent Beam. Lucent Beam is 6 second cooldown. Uh, the Spectral Dagger is almost 3 times the cooldown at 16 seconds. And it does less damage. It scales 50 to 200 as opposed to 75 to 300, which is most nukes. And it has a mini stun. The utility of the slow and small vision is, is like slight benefit. But again, his nuke is pretty weak in comparison to most typical nukes. And it also takes a lot of mana. It takes 100, like 
140 mana, 160 at level 4. Luna's Lucent Beam only takes 120. Uh, he has lower base move speed, but that's somewhat compensated by having Dagger, and you usually go Mantis style on him, so it's not that big of a deal. You can also go Tranquils on him to uh, make up for his move speed, and his illusions do get move speed bonuses, too. And lastly, he has no night vision, uh, and that's also really important, because the 6-12 minute phase of the game, you're really vulnerable to ganks. You're like still really under farm, and you don't really want to die at that point, point. and Luna has 1800 night vision. Uh, 1,000 bonus from Lunar Blessing, and it might not seem that big of a difference, but half the game is in nighttime, or I guess it depends on how long the game lasts, but usually around half the game is in nighttime, and the Lunar Blessing is actually a really underrated skill, and not many people talk about the Ultra Vision when they talk about Luna, but it is really, really important and highly underrated, and it can save her from a lot of deaths, and you can also play aggressively with it, because you can just stand here in the jungle, and you can see them, but they can't see you, and... Loda also has a much easier time last hitting because he has 14 damage, plus 14, and so he's sitting at a pretty 76 damage, whereas he has 55, so that's like 25% increase in damage. And so this is the weak part of Spectre. He just dies. He doesn't offer that much in lane at early levels. He doesn't have good last hitting abilities. He doesn't have good defensive capabilities. He doesn't have strong nukes and he's overall just really really weak and that's why people don't pick him because he loses his lane and i think dignitas knew that they were they were gonna lose his lane but why would you pick specter then what are the pros i listed a lot of cons but what are the pros he has better chasing skills he actually has like this is like an aoe movement speed uh decrease for enemies and increase for him and he can chase multiple heroes that with spectral dagger and it lasts okay seven duration out of 16 but luna doesn't have any sort of slow and she never gets scotty and you have to rely on her innately fast move speed and being able to loosen beam people down and people go move speed builds with her but uh, Spectre has a lot more mobility and he has haunt in order to chase down weak ass supports too and he can do that from anywhere on the map I mean, I'll talk about that later. He has better escaping skills. He can dagger into the trees. Luna can't do any anything like that, and it's really important to have to for carries to have some sort of escaping mechanism like anti mage or faceless void. They both have like a pseudo or faceless void has a pseudo blink, but regardless, they're both pretty difficult to kill. And Spectre does have that going for her. She's tanky, and she's not tanky at early levels, but dispersion is a really really good skill. 22% damage reflected, and it actually prevents the 22% damage. So if you have a 300 damage nuke, as 22% damage of that mitigated by dispersion, and then 25% by uh, just by 25% by magic resistance and 22% from dispersion. And also, if you have heals to combo with it from magic stick, from tranquil boots, from warlock heal, the or mech, it like the effect is buffed by about 22% or treads or any HP item because of this uh, dispersion. Compare that to a hero like Luna who doesn't have any defensive skills. I mean, she has eclipse, but that's that's offensive. You can use it defensively because people won't clump around you. But it's important to note that she scales really well with HP items. Also, Desolate is pure damage, so if you hover over it, it says damage pure, and that's important to note because Luna is not pure. Her passive just grants straight up damage, and it's hence mitigated by armor, and um, Spectre's Desolate is not. And also, if you get Illusions with Spectre, they do full Desolate damage, and this is also very, very important because outgoing damage haunt, if you read it, it says 40%, but the Illusions still do full Desolate damage, and this is why... Desolate and Haunt is just a really, really strong combo, and this is why almost everyone goes Manta style on her, which Aoi will go later. Um, and also, she's more difficult to focus down on team fights because you have like all these illusions going on, and you can Haunt and you can reality any of them. And on top of that, if you focus her down, your team's going to take a lot of damage. Like, let's say you have like 1100 HP from uh, just whatever items you have at some midpoint in the game, and then you have a Warlock heal on top, and then a mech. Warlock heal, I think, is. 45 times 9, so like almost 400, uh, around 400. So you have 400 heal from that, so that's 1500 effective HP, and then you have 250 more from mech, that's 1750. So just from you standing there and dying and doing absolutely nothing, uh, their whole team will take 20% 20, 20 damage of 1750, which is which is a lot of damage. And I know they, bought, uh, they like... Um, nerfed it a little bit so that like the further away you are the less damage it is but it's still a very very strong ability because usually uh specter's in the middle of the fight and the last the last most important thing is her ability to split push so 
Keeper is always banned because you can just have someone pushing a lane while your team is pushing. And you can push two lanes at once because you can just recall the other guy. And same with Spectre. You can always be in another lane and then she can just haunt in at any time and you can have multiple lanes push. Which is why uh, Spectre is really strong. And also another thing that they... Uh, that I think Dignitas used very well with the Haunt is they it's used to like somewhat protect against Eclipse because as soon as she eclipses you can Haunt and then the uh, Haunt illusions will tank a lot of the damage and they're like going to go away in a few seconds anyways so why not use them for that and that's actually a really really uh, strong use of Haunt that I saw in this game so uh, I don't really know if many of you guys watch this game but um, spoiler alert uh, Dignitas gets owned early game. They get destroyed in like the first like 10, 12 minutes. If you look at the CS, 45 last hits versus 11 for Spectre. But they managed to come back because of uh, the pros that I mentioned with Aoi. He can like split push and get catch up and farm while Luna's forced to be with their team. And also Luna's really easy to focus down. They have Warlock Infernal to keep her in place during uh, BKB as well as Fiend's Grip. And Spectre's more of an elusive hero. And also, if you focus Spectre down, your, your all your weak supports who don't have BKBs are going to take dispersion damage. And uh, this this game was actually a really really good showcase with Spectre, and I can tell that they practice and they've used it and they analyze their strengths and weaknesses, and they rely on Warlock and Batrider to carry them through the early mid game, and then Fatal Bonds combined with Haunt and. Um, Inferno for lockdown and Shadow Word to heal along with Dispersion really synergizes well with Spectre's skill set. So if you really want to see a good display of Spectre, I recommend watching this game. No tight under versus Dignitas. I think it's on Join Dota if you really want to watch it. Um, so that goes over Spectre and I took out the pros, the cons, and most item builds with her is pretty standard. You either you usually go Manta, you can mix in a Diffusal if you want, or a Manta or, or a Radiance. It just depends on how the game's going, how well you're farming. You can get Treads if you're offensive position. You can go Phase even for more move speed. You can go Tranquil if you're in defensive position. But that's uh, it. Just depends on the game. But again, this game is a pretty good game to watch if you want to see Spectre in action. So the second question that I received is this. Hiya Ben, I play a lot of support and sometimes there are lulls in the game where my carries are farming for an item I've already warded and the lanes are pushed out pretty far or I just don't feel like going to a lane to farm. Don't feel safe going to a lane to farm. Since supports are often pretty squishy and it's hard to farm neutral camps or my f more farm dependent teammates want the neutral camps, I don't really know what to do and just end up running around for a while. I don't want to leech experience from my teammates by sitting around while they farm. Is there anything more efficient I could be doing there this time? What should I be doing? Thanks. So this is like a kind of second second point to the question that I was asked last week about what the one hero should do uh, in certain situations. This was about like a four or five hero. And what should they do when there's really nothing for them to do? And like let's say Spectre's just free farming down here and Warlock's just getting levels in mid and it's really hard to kill Nyx because he has Spike Carapace or Haste in a bottle and he has Vendetta and top lanes push out really far so it's really hard to gank. So what should you be doing? You should just be doing neutrals all the time. And if you aren't, if you are too weak to do it, then you can just do it with a teammate, or you can just stack. And Rubik does this creep over here. He like telekinesis this creep over here, and it like runs around over here. And obviously, not every support hero is Rubik and can do that. But regardless, it, you can still stack creeps. And if you ever, but. I'll talk about I'll talk more about this later, but it always depends. You don't always want to stack creeps because the, uh, your supports maybe need it elsewhere around the map. But in general, if you don't know what to do, just stack, and somebody on your team will be able to take it. Spectre can take it. He has AOE with dagger. Warlock can heal up and tank it and use fatal bonds. Range heroes can just right click it down and from range outside of the leash range. But in general, if you don't know what to do, just creep stack camps and usually if you creep stack you'll be pretty close to your teammates like if you stack the small camp you'll be really close to mid so if they gank mid you're already there and uh like if you creep over here and run up you're again you're really close to your t1 tower and it's like pretty safe these camps are a little bit more dangerous especially with the t1 tower down as is but in general like you want to just stick with your uh like gank your heroes and stick with your other heroes and just like protect them and they have a Nyx on the other team and a Clockwork, and they can gank from long range, even though they have very good vision around the map in middle and in bottom, and wards are already up as was stated in the question. You still need to be prepared for these ganks that you may not see coming, eat or smoke. And um, aside from that, you can also um, 
you can pull creeps. You can just pull creeps here, deny the other team some experience, get yourself some levels of farms. You can double pull um, and pull this one to this one if this tree's cut down. You can triple pull if you pull from here. You can secure and check runes. This is also very important because like a Warlock matchup versus a Nyx matchup, like Nyx is really dependent on runes and, she, and he is much more devastating with haste runes and um, invis runes. But Warlock's, Warlock's like okay, he's really ulti dependent, his ult's on much longer cooldown than Vendetta, and he doesn't have as much burst, and he's just generally not as much, not as useful with runes, and you usually don't see bot on Warlock, but if it's like Invoker or, uh, I say Invoker or Warlock, because those are two very common heroes mid who don't um, get bottle as well as Obsidian Destroyer, they still need help checking the runes, because you don't want to deny the opponent checking runes, so it's very important to secure those. And a lot of support play revolves around the game timer, so just make sure you know when the creep spawn, that neutral spawn that is, and then make sure you know when the runes spawn every even minute. And you need to be around there so that if it is some sort of like really close matchup in mid, like Queen of Pain versus Puck, you can secure it for your team, and then he can he can win his lane just because you were there to check the rune, and you may even be able to get a kill out of that. Uh, also, there are another uh, couple options you can do. You can TP gank, especially during nighttime, which it is right now. Six to twelve minutes is nighttime. You can like TP top in the fog and then just approach from like eight hundred range away, which is long enough for most spells. You can even almost grip from the fog if um, you're a sort of hero like Bane. And nighttime is very very good time to TP gank. And you can also smoke gank. Uh, in competitive games a lot, you'll see dual supports from the triple lane. They'll rotate from bottom all the way to top or to mid they'll like go around all the way over here i can't actually draw lines in the replay but they'll go all the way around here from bottom radiant and gank the middle lane which is the nyx obviously with sentry wars or dust if you need it um but well last thing i wanted to talk about is like all this depends on what the opponent does and one thing that i try and do a lot is look at the game from the opponent's point of view so like Right now on no t on uh, Dignitas, let's let's check it out from Dignitas's point of view. I'm gonna pause in that pause it real fast. Okay, so Dignitas, they have very good vision right now. They have a ward in mid, and they have a ward in bottom, and um, they don't really know what they're up to right now. A couple of heroes are in fog. Lotus in the fog. Eternal Envy's in the fog, and they only show one hero on top. And pretty much one second ago, Aki was also in the fog. So they only reveal two heroes on the map. They have a Nyx Assassin, who is their main threatening ganker and they have clockwork their second most threatening ganker so their two gankers are visible and uh they don't have to worry about a nyx gank so specter's like fate safe to farm outside a tower and the supports are free to just like run around and do neutrals and whatever they want but as um so no titer knows this like they they know what they see and they they see that their gankers are revealed so they have to make something happen and they can't just like give all give this specter uh breathing room to farm he only has tranquil boots and stout and 300 gold this is 11 minutes in. This is a very poor Spectre. They want to keep him under leveled, so they can't ever make him feel safe. Like, Nyx just being in the fog is almost as good as him running around gaming because he still has that threat of being anywhere at any time with Vendetta, and they don't have any sentries out on the map, so, like, seeing it from no Titan's point of view, it's like, okay, well, they know that our gankers aren't ganking, and we really need to do something about this, um, and we, we need to force Spectre to fight and not farm or try and destroy um like them in a team fight or just try and take complete map control so specter can't farm and you really need to have this sort of game plan as you as you play in a game so that you can win more and it's important to have game plan so all your team's on the same page and you can make shit happen which is keep specter down this is their goal keep specter down don't let her farm uh win uh, keep our early extend our early game advantage with a huge luna farm and we can take team fights because specter is weak early and they know that and they want to do that so as this progresses I'll, I'll fast forward a couple of seconds so now at this point their game plan is revealed aki is rotating top they see this with the ward it says we have one hero two heroes three heroes four heroes and load a tb top so just three seconds later the whole the whole game plan is real. They're going to push top. CM's rotating top. Lota TP top, and all five heroes are showing. And just three seconds, we went from two heroes to no idea what they're doing to five heroes are pushing top. And with these good wars, they know what they're doing right now. So you need to see what they see from the opponent's point of view. And now. Dignitas knows what to do. Okay, they're either going to defend top or abuse the fact that all five of them are going to be together and. 
uh, and try and just outfarm them at this point and just sacrifice his tower for some free farm. But also important to note is that Admiral Bulldog's alone, and uh, no Titan should know this as well. Like, Admiral Bulldog is alone. They have three heroes top. CM's probably close by because she's not going to sit in mid to protect a lone clockwork. And they know that Admiral Bulldog's alone. And Dignitas knows that as well. And they see their whole entire team. So they know that the only vulnerable position right now is Admiral Bulldog. And they see him. So Universe actually spots this out. And I think this is a very good like map awareness by him. Because he knows that everybody else is over here and they're pushing top. So if they can if they can look to get a gank right before that happens, then that's really, really important. And um, you always have to play like based on the vision and based on how things go in go during the game but as soon as dignitas sees their game plan they try and react oh shit they see an opportunity and they try and pick it off while rubik tries to get his level six on bottom and while specter free farms mid they're trying to make shit happen and unfortunately universe is the only guy that like that sees his gank and supports a little bit far behind but he had the right idea and now they see them all five top and Radiant pretty much they just take match. this tower down right now but Regardless, the point I wanted to make is you have to see the game from the opponent's point of view right now, too. And, like, I'll switch it over to the Dire side. And, like, a couple minutes ago, they only saw... They pretty much all, they don't have any wards out except on bottom lane, and no one was on bottom. So they only see Rubik farming on bottom and Spectre farming in mid. So they have no idea where their other three heroes are, which, which are these three heroes. And uh, go back to, like, 20 seconds ago when they were all pushing top. They wanted to group together because they feel threatened. Because they don't know where these heroes are. And Bat with uh, a blink is very very dangerous and they feel threatened so in response they will try and group up and push a tower and that's the response because of what they see on the map and Dignitas should know that too they should know that uh, no Titaner sees no heroes on the map and they feel a little bit threatened but they still want to extend their early game lead and to take Spectre out of the equation by completely eliminating their map control and vision and towers and uh, the appropriate response is is to five man push so it's like very important just to see the game from the opponent's point of view like uh what do they feel threatened by they feel threatened by this bat rider they don't feel threatened by the specter but they may later so they want to like kill the specter and avoid avoid uh bat rider ganks whereas dignitas they're very scared of long range ganks from clockwork they're very scared of their specter dying so he's farming very really close to tower and they're very scared of pushes and they do they do push right now um and like Luna has a really, really early game, huge early game lead, has drums and Akila on the Spectre, so they're going to extend the advantage. And like, who do they want to kill? Like, there's important heroes to kill, and there's unimportant heroes to kill. Like, they can kill Rubik a couple of times, but he's going to get level 6 sooner or later. But if they keep a Spectre down the whole entire game, they're going to, uh, Dignitas will lose because Luna will just out carry her. So there's like prime targets, and there's like not really prime targets, and you have to assess it from the opponent's point of view. And like, what do they want to do? What are they going to do? And just like, take if you're as a support or even a carry player or anybody or a ganker just like just take your time for a second and just like think about what does the opponent want to do right now and you can like liken to chess and it'd be like okay this is what they see this is what they have and this is what they're going to do so we're going to respond by doing this and i try and do this a lot so i can better predict my opponent's moves and so i can be a better player and if i predict wrong that just means i'm either inexperienced and i don't know what's going on or there's just too much variance in or an unknown and a lot of the unknown is caused by lack of vision and lack of experience but sometimes you can predict what heroes are going to do and what people are going to do especially early game it's like okay they're going to try and spec just specter down that's like very obvious as to what no titan wants to do uh in this early game and they accomplished it but you just got to be real like wary of these and try and like prevent it from best you can as in okay let's put two heroes bottom let's get specter and warlock or bat and warlock to try and gain control from like the five to 12 minute uh point in the game so that specter has a little bit of room to breathe and just make sure you have a game plan going in and going out as a support as a carry is all important uh and that will conclude this week's weekly mailbag so again if you have any further questions just email me at mailbag at merlinidota.com and i will get to the good ones and try and do a brief segment like i did this week thanks everybody for watching